Ecology is complicated and that complication has all sorts of consequences and I'd like to discuss that. I'm here with Martin Maron uh, at the University of Queensland and um, we're going to talk about honey eaters. So tell me, tell me about honey eaters. Honey eaters are a really large family of birds, very dominant if you come and visit in Australia. Almost all of, our, all of the honey eaters in the world live in Australia, some of them are in New Guinea, but all but one are this side of the Wallace line. And they're called honey eaters because most of them rely on drinking nectar from blossoms, particularly of eucalyptus trees, but they're also keen on protein, so they'll take um, uh, invertebrates and all sorts of things, but several of them have a lot of reliance on nectar and we're looking at some of those guys right now, some noisy miners that are up in this tree. So what's so special about noisy miners? So noisy miners are a really amazing honey eater, mainly by dint of their, their family arrangements. So they have this incredible social structure, which was actually first identified by Doug Dow, it was based out of UQ in the 70s. And they live in these enormous sedentary colonies that are made up of smaller family groups, maybe a dozen, two dozen birds, that cooperate in all aspects of life, in breeding, um, in foraging, and especially in territorial defence. So you can imagine being a honey eater, um, if you want to be drinking nectar, you need to find that nectar, and it's often in different places through the landscape. Um, and so if you are reliant on sugar, that's, that's a, a lifestyle that means you're probably quite nomadic. But uh, noisy miners are one of the honey eaters that are able to be very sedentary. And that um, means that they can occupy a territory and sort of exclude any competitors for the nectar that's there, for the invertebrates that they also eat, but also for the other sugar sources. So if, if we look at eucalypts, often if you look at the leaves of a eucalypt, and let me see if I can find it here, you'll often see these little white patches of sugar on the leaves and it's not produced, I think there's one right there next to my thumb and um, they're these you'll have sugary... to believe this but yeah <laughs> trust us yeah they're these little sugary secretions that are produced by sap sucking insects called psyllids that sit on the leaves and noisy miners and other members of their genus the manorinas uh, they are very big on um, basically monopolizing these resources and all of the food resources that you find in the canopy particularly of eucalypt trees so just about anywhere in eastern australia you'll find noisy miners or one of their close relatives working in big groups to monopolize resources and chase away all the other competitors so what are the consequences of that and so the consequences are typical bullies you know they tend to really pick on anything smaller than them and they tend to be successful against anything smaller than them so smaller birds get chased out and so if you look around here you I can guarantee there'll be no small passerine birds um, flying about well you might say okay that's a very simplified habitat <laughs> yeah. so you probably wouldn't find them anyway but even in um, more complex areas that are suitable habitat for noisy miners it's very rare to see another small bird You'll still see large birds and um, around here we were just looking at, uh, there was a magpie, there's a butcher bird. Um, so these larger birds, they'll often still attack larger birds because some of these larger birds are nest predators and so they also are very good, not just at defending their territory against competitors, but also defending their territory against uh, predators and threats. Um, but they aren't very effective at getting the larger birds to depart. So you basically end up with this shift. Once you get noisy miners in a site, the site is going to be dominated by noisy miners and larger things. Um, if you've got a site without noisy miners, often in eastern Australian woodlands, the vast majority of the birds you'll encounter are smaller bodied woodland birds. And they're the ones that typically are in trouble, that, that, that are under, under threat. So it is, it is very striking. You know, here at the university or the botanic gardens, there are lots of noisy miners uh, and you just don't see small birds. And you go into yeah. the forests where we were yesterday and you know, lot, masses of silver eyes, lots of small birds everywhere. You know, it, yeah. it, is, it is quite striking the impact they seem to have. Yeah. But they didn't, this is, this is a, this particularly is a very artificial conditions. Mm. Um, and from what I understand, the, the lack of an understory also makes a difference. It's a bit extreme here in the centre of the university. But they, the, the lack of an understory also um, means that they can, they can attack the small birds. But what, what do you think happened in the past? Where, where did these mm. species live? 
Uh, it's the million dollar question. We, we don't believe that the extent of the noisy miners' range has really changed. They're still occurring within their existing range. But we know that even just in recent decades, they have increased in their incidence within that range. So the areas they dominate have, ex have expanded within the range. More and more places that you go, you can no longer see small birds and they're taken over by noisy miners. And people see that in their backyards around Brisbane, for example, all the time. Um, so clearly they are a naturally occurring native species to this part of the world. But um, a couple of things. So first of all, we've, we've, we've changed the habitats to simplify them in lots of ways, not just urbanisation, making this parkland sort of um, uh, appearance with just trees and grass, perfect for noisy miners. But we sort of get that effect also, and there's a couple of them now up in that tree. Mm -hmm. They're very social and interactive. They're fascinating birds. Um, also through grazing, um, fire management, things that remove the understory, that makes it open, makes it really easy for them to defend that territory. Now, there always would have naturally been open grassy woodlands in Australia that probably were naturally home to noisy miners. The problem is that we've cleared most of our temperate woodlands um, in Australia and we're still in the process of clearing our subtropical woodlands. And so there's fewer and fewer places for all those small bodied woodland birds to exist. And so exactly what the structure of a woodland might have been prior to European colonisation and transformation of the landscapes is hard to pin down. But what we do know is we need fewer places that are dominated by noisy miners so that those small birds can have a chance. And I guess the fascinating thing is how small ecological differences, you know, the exact way in which they feed in their social group can change the, the, the dynamics and the community composition over large parts of Australia. And I guess that just shows how complicated ecology is and how we need ecological studies. Yeah, absolutely. Just one species, a strong interactor like a noisy miner, can change everything you think you know about a system. So understanding what are the, th what are the components of the system that make the big differences and really getting your head around what's going on with them. It might look like you're studying one species, but you're understanding how that influences dozens and dozens of other species. And noisy miners are just an absolute classic strong interactor.